focus, it's going down, and Fun plus Phoenix are your world champions. In 2020, League of Legends changed forever. The old god have fallen and a new era begins in the LPL. After years of denial, the second place was no longer good enough. The old kings of China, world champions, were toppled by young upstarts. Knight has package. JDG, it's a numbers advantage, but top esports individual players. But the old misses from Jackie Love, the Whoa, pillar comes through. Nice. Knight comes in, lines it up, and kills Zoom. Jackie Love with Severum, has a bit of healing. Konami, slowed by the package again, every single time. They pulled off an unthinkable heist. And they're not done yet. For years, the old kings of Chinese League of Legends ruled the LPL. You knew their names. Royal, Edward Gaming, Invictus Gaming. And you knew their stars. Uzi, Clearlove, Rookie. And when China conquered the international stage, these rampaging kings were the ones who hoisted the trophies, while the rest of the world cowered in fear. First came Invictus Gaming, who won China's first world championship in 2018, earning respect from the world. The LPL has never won before, but that will change today. The Crownless are finally king, and Invictus Gaming are your 2018 world champions. Then came Fun Plus Phoenix the next year, and though they were less established, they were anything but rookies. The Nexus is being focused, it's going down, and Fun Plus Phoenix are your world champions. The greatest players in China had built dynasties, created legends, they'd smashed every adversary. And in the end, they held League of Legends' greatest prize. But beneath the royalty, there was a new generation, young and hungry, waiting for a chance to prove themselves waiting for a chance to steal that prize. Everything changed in 2020. China's hungry young players ripped the trophy right from under the nose of the old kings. It was an incredible heist. But every great heist needs a crew. The first members of our crew, well, their story began in an internet cafe. Knight and Yagao grew up together in Pingshang, and when they fell in love with League of Legends, they started going to internet cafes the same internet cafe. Their duels in the mid lane were fierce as the two young up and coming players battled for the title of the best mid in Ping Shang. As they grew older, they faced off in new cities, new stages, and eventually in the LPL. Knight and Yagao's battle to be the best never ended. The stakes just got a lot higher. So, it's gonna be a lot more aggressive. Take the straight. Stuart lands into the Vanguard's edge. Okay. Just find yourself an easy kill. Knight is styling on this mid. By 2019, Knight had finally gotten ahead of Yagao. People were starting to call him China's next great mid lane talent. But then, Invictus Gaming brought them both down. They jump on in immediately. Jackie Love takes the first. The second goes over to him as well. Zooms late to the party. They'll just give it all. As IG run on in, they say, hey, it doesn't matter. Quadra, give oh, it all. The Penta. Yes, you know he gets the Penta kill. And that'll be all she wrote. The cannon goes down. And Top Esports are out, and it's 3v2. Logan's away from his base. I think IG have done it. Yeah, well, uh, Knight's the only one that needs to die on this one, and that's it. Knight has fallen! IG will earn their spot to defend their championship and take the third seed to represent China at Europe. During IG's miraculous run to Worlds 2019, they toppled both JDG and Top in the gauntlet, shattering Knight and Yagao's world's dreams. So going into 2020, the prodigies from Ping Shang were ready for some revenge. Which brings us to the next member of our crew, another prodigy who was looking to make up for a brutal 2019. Kanavi. As part of a controversial string of business decisions by his former org, Kanavi was loaned to Chinese team JD Gaming on a contract that a Korean senator called worse than slavery. But as Griffin imploded in the wake of their controversy, Kanavi was freed. He signed a new contract with JD Gaming in November. Kanavi is such a such an exceptional player for the fact that 
he's willing to come into the LPL last year on JDG on a loan and have such a, a good performance even in a chaotic situation. And I think JDG are the team that have allowed him to flourish because how many other teams would their laners be willing to say, hey, we'll give up waves to, to let you invade. We'll give up waves to go help and make sure you can get the most out of what you want. And it's really been a kind of match made in heaven with Kanavi and JDG. Definitely think it was the team's commitment to play around him. And this is something that he did say in interviews uh, when he re-signed with JD Gaming as a free agent after all the troubles in the off season. JD Gaming did say that they were willing to actually just reform the team around him. And I, I think they stayed true to that promise. It's a stun. Good oh. buffer there, but he's actually going to jump straight in on top of this Tristana. And there's the dunk straight down on top of him. The tra teleport did come in. Kanak does a must stone him, but they have got Garby just trying to do as much damage as he possibly can. PYL is here, but it's only really to try and keep everybody away. He's going to try and find a damage, but there's no one there. Kramer just wasn't there on time. Double kill for the Silas and JDG taking control. Yagao as well, getting basically the 1v. What is the damage? Kanavi for JDG. This is their way into the top four of the LPL. Bellow spread that. She stops the showstopper. What was that? Double kill now for Kanavi. Way can't do anything about it. And he'll fall as well. That's a triple onto the board. Ah, 어, 일단 제가 좀잘 풀려야 잘하는 스타일이라서 팀원들이 좀 저한테 맞춰주는 게 있거든요. 그래서 제가 잘 풀려야 좀 게임 잘 풀리다 보니까 항상 저한테 맞추는 것 같아요. Kanavi's aggressive carry style of jungling took JDG to the top of the league in the spring split, but he wasn't doing it alone. In addition to help from the rest of his incredible team, he had Yagao in his mid lane, still fighting to outdo his childhood rival, Knight. JDG are a team we've been calling the smartest team in the LPL. You can see it all starts from the early game that they're really good at playing around their jungler, Kanavi. It's all about funneling the resources into him. It also comes from their great team fighting from their top laner, Zoom, who is the best team fighting top laner in the league, full stop. JDG finished second in the regular season, only behind IG. But in the playoffs, they went on a tear. Kanavi led them to victory, sweeping the defending world champions Fun Plus Phoenix before facing off against their rivals, top esports, in the finals. It was a historic moment for the league. China's old guard had been overthrown by two mid laners who turned each other into warriors, by a jungler who was hungry to prove that he was more than just a victim, by a new generation of players desperate for their shot at the prize. And it was a hell of a show. Knight has package. JDG, it's a numbers advantage, but top esports, individual players with the old misses from Jackie Love. The oh, pillar comes through. Knight. Knight comes in, lines it up, and kills Zoom. Jackie Love with Severum has a bit of healing. Kanavi slowed by the package again every single time. I cast this champion, he pops off. Onto the dragon they begin. Top esports are looking to contest this. The direct line doesn't connect, nor does the death sentence for dragon. Oh, Castle, where did you come from? The soul secured. The fight back to front is there. Knight for the engage. 369. The fun, the knockup. But onto the back line. They will get the lockdown on Jack and The death sentence there. The play as well. The fight turning around. Kanavi still alive. Even though Soul goes down. The lockdown on Jackie Love was beautiful. And Blue Mouth Fresh Man, it never ceases to amaze. All they have to do is hit the Nexus, and they've done it. The new king to the LPL. All hail JDG, your 2020 spring champions. Kanavi came to China on the worst possible terms. But a year later, he ruled the LPL. Ah, oh, the was going to say that. 역시 고생 끝에는 뭔가 보상이 오는구나 싶었어요. 어, 일단 스프링 시즌 때 되게 열심히 하고 잘하려고 많이 노력했는데 그 노력을 좀 인정받은 것 같아서 기분이 좋은 것 같아요. But on the other side of that dramatic game five, top esports also had a bumpy ride to the peak of the LPL. They too had faced defeat in the 2019 gauntlet. They too were eliminated by IG in a five game series. And Knight? The best player not to go to Worlds was forced to watch the tournament from the sidelines. And you can see devastation for top esports. They tried their best, they put their heart and soul into this series. And unfortunately, it just wasn't good enough. But 2020 didn't start off too smoothly for top. They put together a respectable record in the weeks after the LPL returned from the pandemic induced hiatus. But by the end of week five, they were in fourth. 
Which brings us to the fourth member of our crew. Fourth place wasn't what Top wanted. They wanted more. So they made a huge shift in the bottom lane and changed everything. Jackie Love was a world champion AD carry, but during the off season, he left IG, which made him the hottest free agent in China. But when the season started in January, Jackie Love was still teamless. And when the league went on break due to the pandemic, he was home, quarantined in the Hubei province near the virus's outbreak. And even by the time the LPL came back, Jackie Love still didn't have a team. But in early April, Jackie Love finally found a home on top. And then he got to work. Mole's gonna have to flash away, grab from there. Now the Abelio Soul comes through. He Ooh. flashes on top of Mole before the Pop Blossom. Has the time with Xiao Han as well. well. Nicely done. Just what we remember as V5 run into him, he's gonna pick up a triple kill. Jackie Love is back. I think Jackie Love's impact has two dimensions. The obvious one that everyone talks about is his shot calling, but I also think it gave them a real like reset, a start over because even Knight in Karsa, who had a terrible mid-jungle 2v2 in spring, it improved so much when Jackie Love joined, and it probably gave these guys enough room to refocus, realign, and really get on the same page with how they wanted to play the game. With Jackie Love in the bot lane and Knight at mid, Top looked like they'd reached their final form, and they were terrifying. Oh, BP God. You don't survive this on BP God. That's a big, scary snake, and you know what? Knight is gonna be in a 1v3 here. But I'm thinking I might even favor Knight for this one. Stunned up. And there's the ulti as well. He doesn't quite have the damage to bring down the bear. Oh yes, he does. God. And he's got a lifesteal to boot as well. Oh, no. Burning down the quote. No way. Knight, you monster. But to truly call 2020 a new era for this LPL heist to work, they needed more than just JDG and top. And that's where Sooning Gaming comes in. Sooning's spring 2020 roster was packed with young, promising talent but it didn't quite work out. They bombed out of the season with a 7-9 record and didn't even make playoffs. But by the summer split, they found their mojo. Both been found by SOFM, who's just gonna try and run down the Zoe. In the meantime, Weiwei has just been obliterated on the front line. Flash forward, the arrow goes wide, but Sandy's still gonna be stunned up. Uses the cleanse to try and get away from the play. Can a barrage to kite this one out, but Mole goes down to SOFM in the end, and it looks like V5 have fallen, and Sooning are gonna even up the series. They had an aggressive playstyle that mirrored Tops with solo lanes that could go toe to toe with the best. And even though Tops swept them out of the semifinals, they did the same to LGD and then did it again in the gauntlet, securing China's third ticket to Worlds. With Suning just behind them, JDG and Top faced off in a summer finals that felt like fate. And when they stepped on stage to determine who would get the second title of the year, it truly felt like we were in a new era. The players who had rewritten history, who had circled each other all year, creating the new great rivalry for the region, faced off in a historic grand final. And once again, they gave us a hell of a show. Four shot isn't quite enough. In fact, it doesn't come out at all. Hook goes wide. Yagao trying to turn this one around. What was that? Beautiful play out of Yagao as he turns it into more. Yu Yanjo will fall. And Yagao showing us his loose shit. In these sports, they don't know what's going on just yet. They're gonna re-engage onto Lu Mao. He's got himself a stone plate, but he's just not tanky enough. Goes down, but he's straight up Jackie Love. Now Loki trying to dish out the damage. Knight goes into the back line and absolutely bursts them down. But Yagao answers. It's Yu Yanja now on the plate. Yagao versus the world as we see Doom just buying time for his mid laner. The damage coming on through. 369 to Yu Yanja. So damn low! And Yagao gets the kill! There's only one Nexus turret remaining, and Top Esports will destroy it. The old guard have fallen, and a new era begins in the LPL. After years of denial, the second place was no longer good enough. And Top Esports are your LPL 2020 champions! Knight's first domestic title was a powerful statement for both him and his team. They entered the world's group stage as China's strongest team, and for many analysts, favorites to lift the Summoner's Cup. 
but roaring into Worlds next to them are two hungry teams who have never made it to Worlds before either, and they want to lift that same trophy. Even LGD, China's fourth and final team at Worlds, made it in with a revamp roster, one that looks nothing like their old squads. JDG, Top, and Suning all came into the most chaotic year League of Legends had ever seen with a chip on their shoulders, with something to prove, with players who had spent years waiting in the shadows, overlooked, underappreciated, but ready. And they pulled it off. They showed everyone why China is League's most competitive region. And if they get their way, China's stranglehold over International League isn't ending anytime soon. League of Legends has new kings in a new court. And now, there's only one thing left for them to take. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.